Okay, my friends, I wanna talk a little bit about using repetitive licks for speed. Now, what I'm really zoning in on is taking a simple idea and building it up, building it up, building it up by using repetition and really focusing on making it fast. So check, check this out, let's just do it. So let's take seventh fret on our G string with our ring finger to the fifth fret on our G string with our index. And then let's go to the seventh fret on our D string. We have these three notes. Simple enough, right? Now, if you're using a pick, you can pick it using downstrokes, right? If you're using your fingers, you can pick it using your thumb, your index, whatever you want on the picking. All I'm gonna do is use this lick as a repetition exercise. So check this out. Using the techniques we already have been working on, including hammer-ons and pull-offs, I'm gonna use a pull-off in this, and it's gonna mean so much. So check this out. So I'm gonna play this first note, pull off to the second, and then automatically strike that seventh fret on the D string, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to repeat this and I'm going to use this and make it roll. So it's this pattern of three that I really got associated with early on in playing, understanding that within three notes you can loop it and put it on like a spin cycle. Using licks in a repetitive fashion not only is a cool melodic statement that makes your ear stick to something, because as we know, you can solo and you can play something and it's just like it goes by. But if you start to repeat it, then it takes you and the listener and it says, ooh, I hear that. He keeps doing it. Cool, right? Now, the power of three is very, very cool for repetition because it just puts you in this cycle, right? Uh, let's do it up here. Um, let's go around on this pentatonic and start to mess around with it. Let's go eighth fret, high E, fifth fret to eighth fret. Let's go down a string set. Eighth fret, fifth fret to the seventh fret. And on this one, I'm actually gonna use my middle finger to keep my speed up on that seventh fret on the G string, and I'm gonna pull off, remember the pull off in between. Eight, pull off five, seven, strike. Let's go back down to that original. Now let's go to that uh, seventh fret on our D string to the fifth fret, to the seventh fret. This is a great exercise, check it out. Using a repetition to get faster licks. Super cool. Let's try this one once. Let's switch gears. Now, let's use a hammer on. Fifth fret on the B string, hammering on to the eighth fret. And then let's hit the fifth fret with our index finger on our high E. Listen to this one. Oh yeah, let's move it down a string set. Fifth fret to seventh fret on our G to the fifth fret on our B. Let's do it on our D and G string, fifth fret to seventh fret. Do it on the A to B, or A to D. This is all really cool little things that you can do to start adding speed to your licks. As always, mess around with it, get creative. Think about it in a way where you don't have to just focus on, okay, what notes am I hitting? We know what notes, in this case, three notes. We know the notes, 
We're not thinking about anything besides the repetition and building the speed. Great ways to build speed are using a metronome. So using a metronome is one of the fastest ways to assess where you're at technically with time. Because that is important, bar none, is using a metronome to figure out where you're at in your timing. One of the best ways that I built my speed on anything, whether it's licks, riffs, phrases, scales, learning chords, any of it, was starting with a slow metronome. You can start with your metronome as slow as 65 and start to slowly integrate all of the technique, the notes, and the timing together. And what you want to do is you want to play and play and play and start to raise that BPM. Raise it from 65 to 70. That feels okay? Go to 70 to 75. That feels okay? 75 to 80 and so forth. To the point where you know that once it gets too fast, you start sacrificing your speed and your clarity for just your tension. You're getting too tense. The notes aren't ringing as they should. You have to always be real with yourself and keep the notes ringing. Keep it feeling as if it's not just how fast can I get this and be sloppy. You have to keep the clarity. You want to play it so it's perfect at whatever speed. And this is the thing. This is something that you can monitor and you can do daily, weekly, monthly. You can literally get it as if you're going to the gym and use it kind of like a, a weight training. And it's like, okay, Monday I was able to play this lick at 78 BPMs. On Tuesday, I got it up to 80. On Wednesday, I was at 79. But Thursday, I made it to 82. And so on and so forth. This is the kind of way you can start to develop your speed and you can get it to the point of, you can see the progress. And that is so exciting as a player that you can literally chart your speed with your metronome. So that is something that I would absolutely start off with when you are trying to develop your speed. If you have more questions about repetitive licks, developing speed, these are all things that we can talk about. You can send me a video addressing your problems, your concerns. I can assess it and send you a video back and we can get your guitar playing getting faster and faster and cleaner and get you to the point where speed is no longer an issue.